Welcome to the unit Garment Costing and Pricing Methods. This unit reviews the methods of garment costing and pricing. This unit comprises of two modules, a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By the end of this unit, students will be able to outline the elements of basic cost sheet of a garment, understand cost plus method of pricing the garments and understand marginal cost pricing method, understand backward and target pricing method. The first module gives you an overview of garment costing. Apparel costing is used for a number of reasons including for classification and subdivisions of costs, control of materials, labor and overhead expenses and for business policies. Apparel costing is useful for budgeting, for setting standards for measuring efficiencies. It allows the best use of limited resources. It is an instrument of management control. It helps in cost audit and price determination. Further, it helps the management to take decisions. It helps to create an expansion strategy, ensures optimum profitability, helps the management to take suitable steps to meet seasonal variation in volume and costs. Garment costing ascertains the cost per unit of different products manufactured, provides a correct analysis of cost both by process and operations, discloses sources of wastages, acts as a guide to price fixation of products manufactured, ascertains the profitability of each product that is manufactured exercises effective control of stocks of raw materials at various stages, implements cost control systems, guides management in the formulation and implementation of incentive bonus plans, helps in preparation of budgets, helps in implementation of budgetary control. There are three main elements of costs. They are materials, labor and other expenses. Materials are generally direct expenses. Labor can be direct or indirect. Other expenses can be direct or indirect. All indirect expenses give rise to overhead expenses. These include production or work related overheads, administration overheads, selling overheads, distribution overheads, research and development overheads. Direct materials include all raw materials, materials specifically purchased, parts or components purchased or produced and primary packing materials. Direct labor includes labor engaged on the actual production, labor engaged in aiding the manufacturing, specially required for production for example, quality inspectors. Costs can be classified as direct costs and indirect cost. Example, fabric is direct, office rental and indirect expense. Costs can be classified by variability such as fixed or period cost, variable or product cost, semi-variable costs. Cost is a measurement in monetary terms of the amount of resources used for some purpose. According to American Accounting Association, cost is the foregoing in monetary terms incurred or potentially to be incurred in the realization of objective of management which may be manufacturing of a product or rendering of a services. Fixed or period costs are those costs which remain fixed in total amount with increase or decrease in the volume of output for a 
given point of time. Fixed cost for unit decreases as production increases and increases as production declines. Variable or product costs are those costs which vary in total in direct proportion to the volume of output. These costs per unit remain relatively constant with changes in the production. Semi-variable costs are those costs which are partly fixed and partly variable. Marginal cost is the total of variable cost that is prime cost plus variable overhead. Extra cost incurred to manufacture one extra unit of production. Average cost is the total cost upon number of units produced. The particulars of cost sheet include direct materials, direct labor and or the direct expenses. Prime costs are the work overheads, example administrative overheads, factory overheads, etc. The total cost as well as the cost per unit of each of these should be calculated. There is no prescribed format for a cost sheet. It may vary from industry to industry, but here is a specific format of a cost sheet for a garment. Remember, a cost sheet is a statement which shows the various components of total cost of a particular product. A cost sheet is prepared on the basis of historical cost and estimated cost. In continuation of the other functions, a product merchandiser is also required to do the costing of the product. Costing is done by keeping in mind the cost of various raw materials, operating cost of the company, the competition and expected profit of the organization. At the same time, it is necessary to keep in mind the buyer's costing expectations. The cost of a garment depends on these components. <coughs> Fabric, trims, cut make trim charges which is known as CMT and sometimes as CMTP cut make trim and pack. Value added services like printing, embroidery, washing, applique and testing of the garment, quality, transportation and logistics cost, profit of the manufacturing organization. All these components of garment cost depend upon certain parameters which drastically affects the above cost parameters. These parameters play a vital role when the production merchandiser does the costing of garment. As these parameters are very dynamic and keep fluctuating frequently. The parameters that affect the garment cost mostly are unit of measurement, minimum order quantity, inco term decided between the raw material vendor and the garment manufacturer, order quantity, etc. Fabric is generally the most significant factor in the costing of a garment. Fabric accounts to for 60 to 70 percent of the total cost of basic styled garments. In many cases, evaluating the quality and quantity of fabric consumed in the garment indicates better than any other factor. The cost of producing it. The cost of fabric depends upon the type of fabric that is going to be utilized in the garment. So, what are the various parameters that affect the fabric cost? They are unit of measurement, fabric minimum order quantity, order quantity, inco term used. The cost of fabric can be calculated by the following way. Yarn cost plus fabric manufacturing cost, it may be knitting or weaving in case of ovens, plus dyeing cost, plus finishing cost, the total comes to total fabric manufacturing cost. Dyeing cost indicates that if the fabric yarn dyed or fiber dyed or piece dyed, the respective cost will be added to the depending upon the fabric type. The finishing cost includes heat setting, normal finishing and compacting in case of knits, etc. 
fabric cost in garment is equal to rate of fabric multiplied by the consumption of the fabric in the garment. Let us now move on to review the pricing policies of garments. Of course, one objective of pricing is to make profit, but this may not be a firm's prime objective. Other objectives include survival, profit maximization, target return on investment, market share goals, status quo pricing. Survival A firm may have to price its product to survive either as an organization or as a factor in the particular market. This usually means that firm will cut its price to attract the customers. Such a goal cannot be pursued on a long term basis. Consistent losses would cause business to fail. Many firms may state that their goal is to maximize profit, but this goal is impossible to define and thus impossible to achieve. What exactly is the maximum profit? Target return on investment is the return on investment, the amount earned as a result of the investment. Market share goals is a firm market share is its proportion of total industry sales. Some firms attempt through pricing to maintain or increase their share of market. In pricing their products, some firms are guided by a desire to avoid making waves that is to maintain the status quo. This is especially true in industries where price stability is important. If a firm can maintain its profit or market share simply by meeting the competition, changing about the same price as competitors, charging about the same price as competitors for similar products, then it will do so. There are three pricing methods that can be employed by a firm. Cost oriented pricing, competition based pricing, market oriented pricing. In cost oriented pricing, companies often use cost oriented pricing methods when setting the prices. Two methods are normally used for cost oriented pricing, full cost pricing and direct or marginal cost pricing. Full cost pricing also known as cost plus method. This method involves considering all direct and indirect expenses and then adding a desired profit margin to get the price. It considers all the costs, so it is full cost method and it involves adding a desired profit to the full cost, so it is also cost plus method of pricing. Direct or marginal cost pricing involves the calculation of only those costs which are likely to increase as output increases. Indirect or fixed costs, plant, machinery, etc. will remain unaffected whether 1 unit or 1000 units are produced. Like full cost pricing, this method will include a profit margin in the final price, but this only considers marginal costs only. It helps in competitive pricing policy. So, the marginal cost pricing is also is particularly useful in giving competitive prices. For example, when a firm is doing business in a domestic market and it is utilizing say about 60 percent of its capacity and it is deriving all its direct costs from the that 60 percent of the production capacity. And when it gets a, an offer from a foreign importer to give his best price, the company can now consider only the marginal expenses and give a better quotation to get the export order because it is already recovering its direct expenses in the domestic market order. So, that way it is this marginal cost pricing would be helpful in that kind of a situation. Then now moving on to there is a target pricing and backward pricing. Here 
there is a target price and the manufacturer works on backward costing. So, whenever there is a target price, the manufacturer would work uh, backwards to see and to look into the feasibility of accepting the order or not. This is particularly helpful in buyer-seller negotiations. In going rate pricing, the firm bases its price largely on competitors prices with less attention paid to its own cost or to demand. The firm might charge the same or more or less than its major competitors. Where the products offered by firms in a certain industry are very similar, then the public often finds it difficult in perceiving which firm meets their needs best. Many contracts are won or lost on the basis of a competitive bidding. The most usual process is the drawing up of detailed specifications for a product and putting the contract out for tender. Potential suppliers quote a price which is confidential to themselves and the buyer. In a sealed bid pricing that is only known to client and not to the other parties tendering for the service. Forms bid for jobs with firms basing the price on what it thinks other firms would be bidding rather than its own costs or demands. The price of a product should be set in line with the marketing strategy. The danger is that price is viewed in isolation as would be the case with full cost pricing with no reference to other marketing decisions such as positioning, strategic objectives and promotion, distribution and product benefits. You have now come to the end of this unit. To summarize, in this unit, you have learnt about the elements of basic cost sheet of a garment and the importance and methods of costing and classification of costs. You have also reviewed the objectives of pricing and pricing methods adopted by the garment industry. Thank you.